This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. My guest today says prophecy often is avoided by believers. Todd Hampson is with the Prophecy Pro podcast, and he explains why prophecy often gets a bad rap. I want to know a little more, bit more about, about your story, because uh, your interest grew out of this because you really were affected by, uh, by prophecy, fulfilled prophecy. Yeah, it really was. I, <clears throat> my testimony, a, a huge part of it is that I grew up completely unchurched. Um, so I had no no background in Bible or anything like that. I kind of just believed what was subtly taught in schools. So I believed in evolution. I would, if you asked me, I would say I didn't believe there was a God, mm-hmm. uh, that kind of thing. And I and honestly, the, as I got older, the more I thought about it, I thought the Bible was just a book of fairy tales designed to keep people in line. You know, I thought it was just an ancient book of wisdom, so to speak. But through a wild series of events, I wound up in a in a private school in the eighth grade. And it was the first time I clearly heard the gospel. And my art teacher, I have an art background as well. My art teacher was also my Bible teacher. So he answered a lot of my questions. And one of them was, how do, why do you think the Bible's from God? And I could, I could explain away almost everything he threw at me until I was shown fulfilled Bible prophecy. That was the one apologetic that I simply could not explain away because the prophecies are so specific, so big, so that was the thing that got my attention and eventually led to my salvation. And that also gave me, number one, a, a, a found, well-rounded and well-grounded respect for God's word as God's word. And also if all old, you know, fulfilled prophecy was fulfilled literally, then that gave me a love for future prophecy, knowing that future prophecy will also be fil- fulfilled literally. Well, now the podcast, uh, Prophecy Pros, not Prophecy Bros, but po- Prophecy Pros, 400,000 <laughs> 400, listeners is telling us that uh, people have a desire to, uh, to not only hear it, but to learn it. I don't know how, much, how many of those people are challengers, but you guys are in your seventh season already. Uh, how did all this come together? Honestly, I think we live in an era when God wants people to understand the times. And uh, me and another author, Jeff Kinley, we're kind of cut from the same cloth and we both write books on Bible prophecy and we both kind of, you know, we're cut from the same cloth and kept bumping into each other at prophecy conferences and that kind of thing. So we decided to just partner up and do some ministry together. So we came up with the prophecy pros and the goal is to, to basically preach and teach Bible prophecy in a relevant way to the next generation because they haven't heard any of it. And uh, long story short, Harvest House Publishers got a hold of it, the fact that we were doing this together, and they had been talking about doing a podcast, and they actually approached us about doing a podcast, so they help us with the post-production and that kind of thing. And what we're finding is, yes, the world is hungry to have answers. We're definitely reaching the next generation, you know, and we have listeners from, I'd say, 13 to 80, but we're really reaching a lot of, you know, people in their 30s and 40s who are looking at the things in the world and wondering what in the world is going on, both Christians and non-Christians in over 120 different countries. So it's, it's definitely God's using it in a major way. Well, it's definitely grown. But what I, what I see a lot in, uh, if you if watching, watching media, especially those people, the 20 something, the 30 somethings, they're almost afraid to ask the questions because they, they think that they look unintelligent or they look gullible mm-hmm. and, uh, are, how are you getting into these people's lives? How are, they, how are you attracting them? Because it seems like something like this would, they'd want to stay away from because they don't want to be convinced sometimes. Yeah. And I think that was definitely the case. I think one positive aspect of COVID and the global impact that it had mm-hmm. is that people are realizing we live in unstable times and anything that happens now in a major way is a, has global effects. So even people who used to kind of, even Christians who used to shy away from Bible prophecy and just focus on practical everyday life kind of issues are now asking the big questions and really looking for answers. And it's almost like uh, they, they, they know it's in the Bible, but it's intimidating. It is, you know, there's scary parts in mm-hmm. the book of Revelation. So they've, they've never studied it for themselves and are almost scared to open it and take a look. But once they do, they realize Bible prophecy actually gives hope not fear when it's studied correctly. Yeah, I think that uh, we saw that back when, I mean, prophecy was big in the 70s, prophecy study, uh, Bible study, but it, it seemed like the eschatology and, and people making predictions and uh, 
uh, a lot of the, uh, the end time stuff either put people off or somebody would start putting in dates like 1984 and they, didn't full, they weren't fulfilled in that way. Uh, God didn't respond to some of these false prophecies. And then yeah. it just fell away. So how's the church receiving a lot of this? Because you don't hear, in some churches you do, but in a lot of churches you don't hear a lot of teaching on prophecy. Yeah, you really don't. I think because of the sensationalism that's happened and because of the fact that there's various views about the order of events, order of events in the end times, mm -hmm. a lot of churches kind of just settle on teaching the lowest common denominator that, you know, Jesus is coming again and we have a beautiful future in heaven. All of that is true, but because of that, people are have not been learning, you know, Bible prophecy and eschatology, which makes up over 25% of the Bible. Wow. So if we're not teaching Bible prophecy and eschatology, it's like sitting on a, a, a stool with only three pro three legs holding us up. Yeah. So we need that other leg for sure to teach the whole counsel of God. So who are the biggest prophets? When you go back and, and look at the word in its entirety, uh, the prophets that really seem to affect you the most, the ones that, that you've seen, that these are fulfilled prophecies. These, these are the ones that really impact me. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, the book of Daniel, the, the, the framework that both Jesus is teaching in the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, and Luke 21 and Mark 13, as well as everything in Revelation, all fits within the context of things laid out in the book of Daniel, particularly Daniel chapter 9, uh, but also Daniel chapter 2 and in chapter 7 explains in correct historical order all of the um, global Gentile um, empires that happened from Daniel's time all the way to the time of the end. So there are some compelling apologetic things in the book of Daniel and also the full framework for all end time events. Uh, also Ezekiel, Isaiah, all of them have some near and far uh, prophecies. Near meaning at the time when the kings were rebelling and judgment came on Israel, but also uh, they all jump to the end times and give us some key details about the end times as well. well you mentioned the book of Revelation and, and people, I mean, when some pastor says I'm going to do a, a series on Revelation, the congregation gets a little Maybe a, a little nervous, but was was some of that in, in your mind uh, near time prophecy? Some of it distant prophecy. Some of it happening current current prophecy. What 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 do you see in, in Revelation? Sure, that's a fantastic question, and some of that comes down to your interpretation method. Mm -hmm. There are four basic interpretation methods about eschatology, uh, and I won't go through all four of them, but three of them necessarily symbolize and allegorize scripture and kind of make it, okay, this means this, this means that. Well, there's definitely symbolism in Revelation, but the context is always described in, I mean, the, the meaning is always described in the context or as a allu direct allusion to the Old Testament prophets. So Jeff and I both hold the, the literal futurist interpretation method, mm -hmm. meaning every fulfilled prophecy was ha happened literally and was, you know, clearly happened exactly as it was foretold. Therefore, everything that we that the Bible says in the book of Revelation and other places that says will happen in the end times, we believe it literally will happen. Yeah. Again, not to say there's not some symbolism there, but the, the answer is found in, in the context. So that, because of that, I believe um, that, and also in the first chapter of Revelation, it gives you the, the outline for the entire book, mm -hmm. the things which have, have been, been, the things which are, and the things that will, that will be. Mm -hmm. So have been, chapter one, um, you know, talking about some of the things in the past and uh, things that are that when he's given the, the letters to the seven churches in chapters two and three and the things that are yet to come is basically Revelation chapter four through the end of the book. Mm, yeah. And I personally believe that's all yet future for mm -hmm. the end times. Yeah. When you, you mentioned that, would you say uh, at least 25 percent of the Bible is, is deals with prophecy? Mm -hmm. Is there any other. I don't know any other book, any other religion that really focuses on prophetic uh, word like the Bible does. There really isn't. And that, that's a compelling apologetic in itself. And that the Bible is the only religious founding book, if you want to call it that, that number one claims to be the word of God. And number two, backs it up with prophecy. There are several places in scripture where God, I'm paraphrasing, but he essentially says, the proof that the Bible's from me is fulfilled prophecy. Mark, you know, look at look at what I say. What I claim is going to happen is going to happen. That's proof that this is my word. Yeah. And people often uh, ask ask you and Jeff. Uh, okay, tell us where we are 
you know, here, here's, yeah. here's the timeline. And, and I used to see those in, in the 70s. You'd see these big wall posters with the timeline <laughs> on, on the wall. And, and you see those in Sunday school classes. And, and somebody had laid it all out and put dates in it. And uh, people press you for that kind of, that kind of thing? Sometimes we do, we spend quite a bit of time kind of reminding people, don't try to, Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour. You know, uh, we believe the rapture is an imminent event, meaning it could happen at any time. And we, but at the same time, we do believe, you know, Hebrews ten twenty five says we can see the day approaching. Mm-hmm. So in other words, we can understand just by looking at things like, okay, things are starting to line up with the end times. But a lot of people really want to know dates. A lot of people want to attach dates to signs in the sky or a certain amount of years since Israel was reborn and all these different things. So we just encourage people not to do that. Just live your life like first and second Thessalonians. Paul wrote to the Christians, young Christians, basically and paraphrasing what he told them was keep your hands on the plow and keep working and keep an eye to the sky and be ready for the Lord whenever he comes. You think people are concerned about those times because they think, well, as soon as I see this thing happen, I know we're going to have the rapture in 45 days or whatever. I'll, <laughs> I'll start witnessing to my children and my friends that all of a sudden right. they're, they're, they're going to, the incentive is going to be uh, to lay everything else aside and, and start to witness. Right. Yeah. And honestly, and again, that's the Paul's message in First and Second Thessalonians is, now is the time, you know, mm-hmm. let's work now. Let's reach people for Christ now. Let that be our main focus. Um, so Jeff and I always often say that, like, we're, we're kind of in a, in a golden hour for Christianity because of what's going on in the world. We can very carefully, very non-sensationally point people to Jesus and say, these conditions are exactly what Jesus predicted for the end times, exactly what the Bible said. So now is the time to get right with God. If you have ever been presented the gospel and you understand it, accept Christ now because, you know, whether one, one pastor says, whether by rapture or by rupture, we're all going to face the Lord soon. So we got to be ready. Yeah. And, and we, we look at some of those things and, and think, uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to start this now, but uh, you look at today's society and you think, what's the, what's the distance between these, these events? I mean, are they, are they going to happen real sequentially? Or maybe this event's going to happen like like Israel and Jerusalem, and the next fulfilled prophecy may be out there, could be out there two centuries. We don't know. Right. That's a great question and a great observation. We we know for sure. Um, we call it the super sign when Israel became a nation mm-hmm. again, because every end time condition about that what's going to happen in the future tribulation period requires Israel to be a nation again, the Jewish people to be in their land again and to be in control of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount again. So those things are all in place. So that was a super sign because in the 15, 1600s, it was impossible for end time sure. things to happen. Mm-hmm. It was, it didn't make sense at all. Matter of fact, people who held a future literal interpretation method and said Israel's gonna be a nation again, people told them they were crazy, but then Israel became a nation again. So that's the, the front end. And then what we're seeing now is we call it convergence. The, the kind of the opposite end is like everything else, all the other conditions are kind of forming in our day. Mm-hmm. So again, but that's not to say the rapture is tomorrow or the tribulation is next year because it does have kind of a hurry up and wait effect. So we, we simply don't know, but I think it's exciting to see that these developments coming together in our era. We do know once the, the tribulation is kicked off, not by the rapture, but by the confirming of a covenant based on Daniel uh, chapter nine, and that the tribulation period is Daniel's 70th week. So, so that's where we get the seven year time frame for the tribulation. So um, we know that once that treaty is signed, so to speak, that everything in Revelation will happen in a short time period, but we simply don't know how close we are to that. It's casting its shadow on us now, but it doesn't mean we can set dates or say it's going to be next year or five years from now. We just simply trust the Lord and keep moving forward. For more information on the Prophecy Pros, you can check out their website where they have a lot of resources. After the break. One way or another, we have to get our, this word into our kids because the challenges and the things that they're facing is great. Veronica and Aaron McLaurin lead a ministry in the Lima, Ohio area. It's making an impact in the lives of young men and women. That's coming up next on Viewpoint. Our culture is moving away from a biblically-based lifestyle faster than ever in history. 
Even many believers struggle to explain their own viewpoint on who Jesus really is. God says in the Old Testament that my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge. That's why TV44 created Viewpoint with Bob Lacey, a program that discusses biblical issues and how they relate to our culture today. Now in our second season, Viewpoint is hitting more topics head on than ever this year. Every Viewpoint program is produced without any commercial advertising, so no topics are off limits. But we couldn't do this show without the support of our financial partners. Maybe you've never supported a Christian media ministry before, but in today's world, our message is needed more than ever, and it only takes a minute to give. Go to WTLW.com and click Get Involved, then Donate. Your gift of $20, $50, or even $100 will help continue the outreach of TV44's Viewpoint program to impact your hometown and the world. Would you like to help expand the reach of Viewpoint with Bob Lacey? Then sign in with your YouTube account and subscribe. Do the same on your favorite podcast app. By subscribing, rating, and sharing Viewpoint content, you will help this life-changing media show up on more search engines as popular and trending. If everyone watching right now would do that, Viewpoint would become more visible worldwide to online viewers in places that missionaries can't even reach. Thank you for helping us reach the world by sharing Viewpoint with Bob Lacey. Boxing can be a great way for youth to get their frustrations out. But for today's guest, it's also a way to share Christ. Veronica and Aaron McLaurin lead a ministry in the Lima, Ohio area that's making an impact in the lives of young men and women. These kids are learning some really uh, great talent. I mean, they're, they're learning some things because you know, I'm watching you and you're talking to them. You say duck, you say hit, you know, yeah. power, all this. And some of these kids are pretty good boxers. Absolutely. How do you send them back to school without their head getting so big that they think I can just take on anybody now and I'm going to go after that bully that was you know giving me a rough time last year uh, what kind of things do you send them back with as far as you've got this power you've got this ability but you you need control there's a lot of soft skills that we teach as well yeah. there's focus self-control okay. time management um, flexibility, being flexible, task, task orientation, yeah, so there's a, a lot of that that happens as well. Mm -hmm. Besides just the physical and besides the, the, yes. the powerful stuff, you're teaching them the, the softer characteristics. It's something that's really needed. I mean, Absolutely. when you look at a, a, a school hallway these days. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's pretty yeah. good. But, but to answer your question, um, each kid is different. Mm -hmm. And so over that six week period, uh, God has blessed me. I fought for years myself. And so God has blessed me to be able to um, train others and identify very quickly some of the areas of struggle, uh, whether they lack in confidence, self-esteem, or the ability to stand up for what they believe in. And over that six week period, uh, as I'm running those hand drills, I'm trying to bring out some different in each person. One kid may not need a lot of that. This kid may need a little bit of structure of, this is how you need to kind of, you know, back off a little bit. You just got too much energy. You just mm -hmm. doing too much. You know, you just jumping too fast for, you know, to certain conclusion. Kid over here, you may be a little bit too shy. At the end of the day, each kid is different. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with something a little right. bit different. And so what we try to do is try to cater our conversations mm -hmm. to the basic needs to that kid. Um, two or three days, I got a pretty good grasp of what kid, each kid is needed mm -hmm. with. I done held some kind of a conversation with the mom, the dad. Why you want your kid in here? Oh, they need to learn how to fight back. Well, what they need to learn how to fight back. Well, they getting bullied in school? That may be one kid. Another kid, uh, he don't speak up for himself. That may be something else. It may be, uh, you know what, uh, he just always shine down. Uh, and so we, are, we try to get a really good mm -hmm. knowledge, a really good base. 
And then I ask God while I'm doing those hand drills, God, same way you meet our needs, right? Same way you go right into that personal situation in our lives and meet us right where we at. How can we meet each kid? How yeah. can we build that kid confidence up? How can we build that kid? And we have, like I said earlier, each kid is di have a different fight. So this one kid may coming in here, he may be acting out because he don't have a dad. Yeah. He don't have a mom. And he see you over there, Bob, you got a mom, you mm -hmm. got the dad, y'all high-fiving and y'all loving on one another. But when I leave out of the gym, I don't have any yeah. of that. And so how can we give you some of those small things uh, we call what we call small successes, which means a big thing. And then sure. it's like, you know what? I, I feel like I've accomplished something. I feel like I got something. I don't have to go out there and prove that I'm tougher than somebody because that that thing that I was missing on the inside, I now I have fulfillment. I feel better. I feel so much better. And I know it's the Holy Spirit work. I'll share this one thing with you now that I'm thinking like this here. I remember we was doing a chicken dinner sale, <laughs> back on that chicken dinner sale. And uh, there was this homeless guy and uh, he was hungry. And I sent one of my younger guys over there to give him some dinners, you know, a dinner because mm -hmm. he was hungry. So he goes there, he give him a dinner. He comes back, he says, coach, that guy had tears in his eyes. Uh -huh. and, and I didn't know what to do. And he started crying and I started crying. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow. I yeah. said that to, to say, that can't, same kid, he was with me when he was 12 years old. I just talked to that kid two days ago. He's 24, 25 wow. years old. And same heart, he got into a little bit of trouble, but he come right back to the gym. They always do. To mm -hmm. get that same type of feeding mm -hmm. that they got 10 yeah. years ago. I got one more story yeah. I need to share with you. Sure. I believe this is gonna hit home. Um, because you, you, you're starting to pull on the side that's just <laughs> kind of you know intertwined. But let me give you this one more story. Uh, I um, received this phone call from um, this older couple. And they said, uh, you know, my son, my grandson used to come and train under you uh, six, seven, maybe 10 years ago. And I did boxing with him. And this kid has some discipline problems. He has anger issues, he had a lot. Long story short, he's, he's, he sent his grandma, granddad to the gym because they was dealing with Parkinson. Isn't that oh. something? But boxing is a good thing mm -hmm. for Parkinson. So long story short, the same thing that helped the young man out is now the same thing that's going to help the grandma <laughs> and granddad out. Awesome. You see how the kids sure. are. You know how you see how God has bridged that generation blessing over there. So I, th things like that really blesses us because that's what we want right. to see. Well, the thing I, I notice <laughs> is that you're, you're, you're constantly edifying those kids as they're, you're doing these hand drills. Mm -hmm. You're constantly building them up. Uh, you're talking to the parents and, and, and telling them every child that comes out here today needs to be encouraged, Absolutely. needs to be lifted up, and you're encouraging the crowd. to make, It's just not your kid you're cheering for. You're cheering for this whole community of, of children that come in here have problems that we have no idea what they're facing. So Don't have a clue. Yeah. I mean, there's some That's kids that come in the gym, and a uh, young man we met, the first day he came in, his fists were balled tight, and he said, I just, I feel like hitting my teacher. Oh. And from that, we were able to open a conversation. This young man has excelled in the program, and he's doing so much better. I think they just find two individuals that they feel like they can talk to. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, God does it. We're just available, <laughs> and they come up to us, and we just say yes. Well, that young man that had his fist balled up <laughs> at the teacher, his testimony was a week later, we yeah. had a thought of the day, and the thought of the day was, celebrate small successes. Yes. <laughs> Nobody's perfect, but celebrate small success. And he comes in the gym and he runs over to my wife. He said, I had a small success. <laughs> he did. And, and that's what came out of his mouth. I did not hit my teacher. I didn't hit my teacher. Oh, and, and, that and, is, that's, yeah. and that's huge right yeah. now because of- um, School violence. And the school shooting. violence, school shootings, um, and the things. You know, warfare, warfare is, um, it's high. And we think as Christians, we see warfare, and that's just us. But our kids see warfare. Real warfare, yeah. Yeah, inside the school, out of the school. And we have to get this word. Gotta get it to that's them. The, that's, that's the only way things are mm -hmm. gonna really change. Yeah. Now how we get to it, 
you know, this is our way of getting the word to them. I know sure. Sunday morning, that's another way. But at the end of the day, one way or another, we have to get our, this word into our kids because the challenges and the things that they're facing is great. What, what's the plans now? I mean, it, there, you've, you've got a facility that uh, really, I mean, you're right downtown in the middle of this this, this city mm -hmm. and surrounded by, you know, uh, old buildings that used to be falling down. Now it's kind of revitalized. It's, mm -hmm. it's starting to grow up again. What's your plans? Do you have, yeah. uh, are you just waiting to say, God, what do we do next? Yeah, well, some of it is that. It is just a daily walk with the Lord mm -hmm. and allowing him to lead us. But we do see that there is a restoration in the body of Christ through discipleship. And so we would love to be unchurched. We feel strongly called to those that have never walked into a mm -hmm. church before. Um, and we do have another floor that we have not quite um, redeveloped quite yet. But mm -hmm. that is where we'd love to do something with connecting the unchurched with God, mm -hmm. showing them, just walking alongside them, teaching Bible studies and sharing the good news mm -hmm. of the Lord. We want to create a space for that. Would you, would you do that with a, a physical fitness connection of some kind or since it's already kind of a gym? Or? We yes. Definitely mm -hmm. we keep the physical fitness connection mm -hmm. because that's, you know, that's where that's, we glean most of them yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. That is amazing. There, there's people out there right now saying, I, I, I'd like to get involved in this. I mean, <laughs> you, you've done this with, with God. I mean, God's done it through mm -hmm. you. But at Absolutely. the same time, it's your faith and your prayers that have brought it all together and it's kind of making it happen. It could happen even, even faster. Absolutely. Uh, and you, you could reach a whole lot more kids. That's uh, the goal. If, that is the if, goal. Yeah. How can people get involved? Well, they can definitely um, donate, um, mm -hmm. pray. Um, we, we need all the prayers possible because you can feel it. You can feel right. when you're being covered. And that's very important. Um, but donations, we take donations. We actually have a fundraiser this weekend, uh, chicken, chicken dinner sale. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting mine. <laughs> and Absolutely. so you could purchase a chicken dinner. We'll be at the Auto Zone. Um, from time to time, we have open house events. Mm -hmm. We market on Facebook. Anything that you could donate, mm -hmm. if you have helping hands and you can come mm -hmm. clean or build, we do all of that. How do, how do people find you on, on Facebook or on, how do they find you on social media? New Look Fitness. New Look Fitness. New Look Fitness, yep. and you'll find all of the Soldiers of Honor information there. Okay, yep. so if somebody wants to register their children, they can do that same thing. Then. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes. I know you. God's got a whole, whole lot more for you. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing ministry, <laughs> and when you just keep saying yes to God, it's, yeah. it gets exciting, doesn't it? It yes. does. Absolutely. It's very yes. exciting. As we do each week, I remind you that this show and the ministries of TV44 are supported by viewers just like you. So we'd appreciate your financial support. I'm Bob Placey, thanks for joining me. For more interviews on demand, plus additional resources from today's guests, go to WTLW.com and click on the Viewpoint tab. If you are enjoying Viewpoint, we would appreciate your financial gift so we can continue to produce more programs.